<laughs> Greetings, humans. Greetings. And welcome back to another fun-filled episode. They're here till 99 year. Veteran of the Woods. Yes, indeed. That's actually where bears live, if you don't know already. Yes, indeed. Great to have everyone here with us. Great to see Amy. She says, hi, bear. I am fashionably early. Yes, you are. Congratulations. Congratulations to you and probably Melissa also, either fashionably early or fashionably late out there. Look at these jackets. Beer was uh, trying to come up with a good thumbnail and was like, holy moly, these are some wild, wild jackets. Now, now Beer wants one. He's like, I, I don't know which one Beer wants, but uh, uh, may, maybe the guy there in the middle getting the, um, getting the trophy or something like that. But uh, there we go. That's a very fashionable... 1970s era fashion. <laughs> uh, you could either wear it, uh, or you could hang it up as like curtains or, um, uh, you know, something along those lines. Drive the neighbors crazy out there. Drive the neighbors crazy. Hashtag Melissa always, always switching. Well, is she? Oh my goodness. Uh, great to see Jiminy here. And great to see all of the Lesters here. Hopefully we'll get some more people in. But you know what, people? You know what time it is. Uh, oh, it's 8 o'clock. No, 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 not 8 o'clock. It is, it is actually, uh, time for our, let me find it here. Good people here. A uh, time for our month of, it is, uh, March, uh, March 1st out here. So we kind of do, uh, the old, um, uh, uh, month of, so let's go ahead and get right on into it. March 2023 out here. It is, people. A developmental Disabilities Awareness Month, people. Uh, it is National Athletic Training Month. I'm not sure if those two go together. Uh, National Cerebral Palsy Awareness Month. Gotta be aware of that. National Brain Injury Awareness Month. Blah, 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 blah. National Bear Can't Talk Month. <laughs> National Brain Injury Awareness Month. National Breast Implant Awareness Month. Bear is very... Aware of breast implants out there. Yes, indeed. Uh, 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 Andromatorious Awareness Month? I don't even know. A bear is not even aware of what the heck that is. Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Month. It is, people. Finally. Finally. We, we finally get through Black History Month. And we get Irish Heritage Month. Irish American Heritage Month out there. A National uh, Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. Be aware of that. National Kidney Month. Uh, national, uh, oh, National Kidney Month. Uh, Asset Management Awareness Month, people. Uh, it is National uh, Triosomy Awareness Month. I, I hope you people are aware of that. Uh, Jiminy asked, have you hugged your fetterman today? National Brain Injury Month. Yes, indeed. Want a proof of life of that man out there. Uh, national Social Work Month. At National Women's History Month. Uh, that, uh, can we even say that these days? Uh, isn't it supposed to be they, them month or something like that? At National Birthing Persons Month out there. At National Sauce Month, people. Finally. Finally, we have a sauce month. National Noodle Month. I'm not sure if that goes with National Sauce Month, but okay. National Frozen Food Month. It's National Flower Month. National Credit Education Month out there, people. National Craft Month. It is National Cheerleader. It should just be National Cheerleader Month. Beer's just going to go with that. National Cheerleader Month. Going to go along with uh, National, uh, what was that? Uh, uh, breast. What was the one? Breast uh, Breast Enhancement. What was it? Uh, National Breast Implant Month. There we go. Uh, two of them together there. There we go. Where the heck did I go? A National Celery Month, people. National Caffeine Awareness Month. I'm sure every time you wake up, you're aware of caffeine. Whether you've had it or not. A National a Peanut Month. R.I.P. A Jimmy uh, 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 Carter out there. I always said Jimmy Cricket. Jimmy Carter out there. A National Umbrella Month. And it's finally, people, National Nutrition Month out there. Yes, indeed. So there we go. There we are all, all caught up. All caught up on all of our peanuts and celery, umbrellas. Uh, oh, did I mention it's National Credit Education Month? People, he should have. He should have. Along with National Flower Month. And all, all of the other months out there. 
I, uh, P-Money is here. Hello, everyone. I'm in time to find out what to celebrate uh, this month. That's right. That's right. I Did we do it last month? I, I can't remember if we... I think beer was late. I think beer, beer remembered like halfway through February. It's like, oh, crap. I need to do the February month of... There we go. So there is our, our good friends at the National Day calendar out there. Yes, indeed. The answer, P-Money, says Jimmy, is everything. You missed everything. Well, I'm so sorry about that. So, so sorry about that. All right, well, let's go ahead. We've got some interesting campaign updates. Let's go ahead and get to uh, some of those. Let's be clear. Clear the... Clear the deck here and let's find out where we're going because we've actually got, oops, I've got it on the wrong one there. We actually got an update from, that would be Graham Nolan out there. And of course, sing it with me, people. That would be the ghost, the ghost of Matakumaki. Oh, man, I almost passed out there. Whew. Uh, week uh, 14. It's just a good morning ghoul gang. Well, it is evening. We'll let that one slide. What a great week it's been, he says. We've added quite a few uh, new backers to the project. Congratulations. Uh, so to all of the newbies, it's about time. I, I meant welcome aboard. Uh, if you've backed a Compass comic in the past, you know the drill. Uh, if you're new, you'll be receiving updates at this time every Monday, so you'll know exactly where the project is in uh, the process. And he says, to date, actually, let's get to it. Why is Bear talking when he can show? There we go. Oh, what a, uh, oh, uh, to date, uh, 20 pages are complete, and 50 pages, 15, I should say. 15, one five uh, pages are colored. And if I may so, they look awesome. That would be Grant. Oh, they look awesome to Bear, too. I'll be sharing some snippets from the story, so not as to have any spoilers. Yeah, it cut off like a panel there, it looks like. Uh, here is a sample of some colors, uh, and he also says, and, 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 uh, black and white as well. There we go. Uh, done this week. Uh, these are not uh, consecutive pages, so no spoilers. No spoilers at all. There we go. So that's some good stuff out there. Uh, as always, I uh, thank you all for taking the ride with us, and uh, for your support of independent comics, this is the uh, future of the art form, and you're making it happen. Well, uh, little Timmy McTimerson, but that's right. Uh, we'll see you here next Monday. Monday, 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 Monday. Uh, the best uh, from Graham out there. So there you go. There's a black and white, of course, the color earlier there. So there we go. Uh, looks like the uh, kind of uh, home Florida has. Well, that's... Uh, I, I'm assuming... Uh, let's go back here. <clears throat> I, I'm assuming this one. Yes. Very, very much so. Let's let's take a look here. Um, uh, I, I don't see the air, broken air conditioner hanging outside of uh, one of the windows. Uh, there's no uh, broken down cars uh, in, in, in the lot there. He does have a boat. He does have a boat that is um, floating, so that's good. Um, I don't see any gators, snakes. There should be a swarm of uh, 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 of mosquitoes or other biting creatures out there. Um, let's see. Uh, obviously, no Florida man in the picture as well. He must be inside. Um, eh, pretty close. Pretty close to a, a quote. Uh, not that Bear would know anything. He just lives in the woods, people. Uh, but there you go. There is a Florida home out there. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, Jiminy says, uh, if you live in the swamp, though. If you live in the swamp. Uh, isn't Florida all swamp? It's true. Uh, no, 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 it's not. No, uh, we... Uh, Beer does have some uh, beautiful, beautiful land to sell you, though. Beautiful. Not swamp at all. Not, not swamp at all. Actually, we have... A little ways away from here, but uh, they actually have one of the... This was back in, like, I don't know, the 50s or the 60s or something like that, where they would have, like, um, you know, the, the game shows. Oh, you could win a, a home in Florida. And uh, it's basically, like, a quarter-acre lot, like, in the middle, you know, of, like, <laughs> some, like, clear-cut land that they clear-cut a number of years back, and they just put, like, all these little, tiny little lots. So all these people that won, like, I don't know, whatever it was, Price of right or whatever the heck they had back then. Uh, you know, they all lived together. You know, they're like, all right, we won. We won everything. We've won our, 
are placed in Florida and they finally come down to it. And it's like, ah, where's all the mosquitoes? Ah, where's all the, the, the heat, the humidity? Ah, I'm dying, I'm dying here. It's like, oh, yeah, okay, you know, kind of wondering. A beer saw something like a, a, what was that, like South Carolina or something like that. They were going to put up like a Yankee tax. I'm like, where is, where is Florida's Yankee tax out here for crying out loud? Where, where is it? Oh. Uh, swamp and condos and and Disney. We'll get to Disney in just a second here. Uh, where are the spiders? Who drew this? Uh, that would be Graham Nolan out there. Graham Nolan. Yeah, you you kind of are going through the woods or something like that. We we have something called banana spiders. They're probably about oh they'll get up pretty big. Um, you know what would you say, uh, Jiminy? About maybe the size of your hand or something like that. So uh, they're not dangerous or anything like that, but. <laughs> They, they make these huge webs, so like you're, you're walking along and all of a sudden, rah, you get caught up, then the spider falls down your shirt or whatever, you're like, ah, I'm running through the woods, and you know, Bear is just sitting there just laughing, laughing his, his, um, a, a bear butt off, bear, not, not, it's not bear, it's, it's just bear, bear's butt, he's laughing bear's butt off, not, not a bear butt, yes indeed. <laughs> There's always a Canadian tax, this is true. This is true. We should have a Canadian tax. That's me. A bear. <laughs> this is going totally off the subject here, but Bear actually saw where they were. Uh, Ron Red Rum Def Santis out there shipping all the, the illegal migrants up to New York City. New York City was like, oh, how dare you? Uh, we, we love these people. Th these are the salt of the earth people. How dare you? Red Rum Death Santas out there. Uh, well, they turned around and they were busting the people up into Canada. Canada was like, no, you can't send all these people up here. They need to stay in New York. <laughs> it's like, ah, uh, yeah, that's... That, that, that go. I mean, we shipped, like, what was it? The first batch, they went to the Hamptons, and then they says, hell no, we ain't gonna keep them here. Was it the Hamptons, or was it... It, it was one of those places up there, one of those fancy pants places up there. He's like, hell no, we're not going to keep these people. It shipped them to like an immigrant cramp or something like that, a, like an army base or something. So anyways, there, there we are. There, there we are. That is completely off topic. But um, uh, spiders, uh, Canadians being um, uh, not welcoming to immigrants, all that good stuff. Uh, completely, completely, completely off topic here. Speaking of completely off topic, well, that would be a Brian Shearer out here. He says, the in-demand is being closed. Well, uh, you could have gave us a heads up, but all right. Thank you, Brian. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi, Brian. A couple things. Please make sure your shipping addresses are up to date. Uh, he sent Indiegogo a request to close the in-demand so it's officially closed when they process it. Let's see. When did he, he put that up today, uh, 7 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. Uh, you may, I, Bear hasn't checked it. You may have an opportunity there. If they haven't shadow banned it. <sighs> uh, thanks for being, um, mm, pardon me here. Mm, grab a drink. Crying out loud. <sighs> Gotta wait that whistle. Uh, thanks for being not just patient, but that would be super patient with this. Uh, everything, uh, with everything is said and done, uh, and you all have your books and perks, he will tell the crazy, stupid, stupid and maddening tale of the last year and a half, and why uh, future campaigns will have the books completely, holy cow, completely finished first. Sweet Moses, it's been a crazy time. That's neat, that is from Brian out there, so hopefully, maybe he just had a hard time, uh, uh, th there's like a album as well, so maybe you had a hard time with the album. Who knows? We will find, we will find out together. Yes, indeed. Uh, let's see. Uh, banana spiders are as big as a man's hand, says Jimmy. He hates them. And their webs uh, have the tensile strength of steel. I don't know. Every time bears run into them, it's all he's been like around the face or something like that. Ah, God, blah, blah, blah. I, I know what they are and everything. I'm not I'm scared or anything. It's just like, ah, for crying out loud. Another banana spider gets you. And they'll come up like within days. I mean, it's kind of amazing how quick those, quick those dang spiders can build their webs. You'd be like, ah, oh, you know, I'm doing fine, blah, 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 blah. Taking the same path. I'm coming back. Yeah, maybe later that day or something like that. La, 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 blah. Banana spider. Ay, 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 ay. <clears throat> uh, let's see. P-Money asked, uh, banana spider, is that the tarantula and bananas from day zero? Uh, no. No, no, they're not. They're, they're, 
they're harmless. Well, uh, you know, well, no, beer, beer shouldn't say. Beer shouldn't say. Uh, they're harmless. They're harmless out there. All right, where, where is beer going next? He's going somewhere next. Going somewhere great here, people. One second. One of these days. Yada, yada, yada. All that fun stuff. Oh, uh, when I... I tell you what, people, I need to check out this book. I, I have not read, unfortunately, not read uh, Fatal out there. Uh, one of the things Bear was saying on the previous show, I, I know a little consternation out there with uh, uh, Cyberfrog 2, best comic and comic date out there. Uh, you know, sometimes Bear puts them up head to head. Um, Fatal looks looks amazing out there. Probably a really good story, too, but uh, yeah, I, I don't think that would have been. I don't think that would have been very uh, fair to Charlie out there to put it up against. Against Uncle E, but uh, there we go. Uh, final 89. The final 89 out there, shipments. Uh, this is from Clint uh, Stoker. Uh, fatal. I, uh, I hope I said that. Fatal out there. Uh, there are only 98. 89 packages. Ah, uh, bears dyslexia here. Uh, there's only 89 packages left to ship. Uh, most of those are the original head sketch perks. Uh, the 11 by 17 uh, print perks. Man, man, that ought to be a good one. And a few other uh, new and Australian shipments that uh, tend to go out before the weekend. Crikey! Uh, Charlie and I are working out the logistics of the head sketches and signed prints, so those uh, may take some additional time, uh, but we don't expect any major delays. By the way, this is one of the campaign. this is probably the only campaign of Bear Remembers, uh, where if you got a certain tier, you actually got your books first. So uh, Bear actually got it and was like, all right, cool, cool book. Uh, but he didn't read it. <laughs> he got it first and didn't read. Uh, uh, okay, so I'll try and check it out maybe this weekend or something. Uh, what's next? Uh, for Sweet Comics, he asked. Well, let's find out. Uh, Downcast 4, maybe Hunting Grounds, is the latest installment of the series and will be launching on April 6th. Uh, the book is two-thirds finished right now, and uh, conservatively speaking, uh, it should be ready to ship by September, uh, if not sooner. If you're enjoying our books, uh, please consider signing up for the pre-launch page. Probably because old, old, uh, well, I don't know, uh, uh, IGG might not ban Shadow Band Downcast. We'll see. We'll find out together. Uh, thank you all so much for your support and patience. Uh, we could not have made this incredible book without... Just by the looks of it, it looks really good. It looks really, really good. I just haven't... And, and thick. It's a nice thick book, too. Uh, the campaign is almost... Almost a wrap. That's from... That's from Clint out there. A.K.A. Sweetcast. Uh, let's see. Uh, gotta do the... Yes. Yes, you do. A uh, beer... Sometimes has a stick. I gotta do the chop when you're walking through uh, tight areas to knock down their webs before they hit you in the face. Yes, indeed. This, this comes from a true Floridian down there. A true Floridian. <laughs> oh, good to see Amy. Great to see Amy. And possibly Melissa as well. You were, you were very, um, uh, fashionably early, Amy. Very fashionably early. There was, uh... Characteristically uh, late out here. Yes, he was. <sighs> For crying out loud. All right. Anyways, moving, moving briskly along because we've actually got uh, one of these days. Barry will actually do do another watch along here, but but we need to talk about uh, that would be first first kill. That would be the Rambo book from uh, uh, your boy Zach out here. He says the first kill, first kill uh, interior art is complete. It's complete, people. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi, you boy. Uh, all of the interior work for first kill is now complete! Exclamation point. Uh, that means we can start lettering the book while the last few remaining covers are finished. Yeah, Bear never got to check out some of the, um, I, I think Bear saw the, um, Canaan White cover. I remember Canaan White was doing one. Gosh, there was a couple other great ones as well out there. Anyways, I have to check those out. Looking pretty good. Actually, let me... Let me get this right here. There we go. There is some beautiful, beautiful artwork there from uh, Aaron Alfeche. They're kind of doing a little interesting here where a couple artists are working on the same book. So there's um, artists that are working on, like, a couple pages. And then I think Aaron um, is working on, like... The last half or last two-thirds or something like that, so. Mm, pretty here. Looking pretty good. Ah, 
got a great tree. Yes, they are nice colors. Let's actually take a look. Hold on. Let me see if Beer can figure out where his mouse is. I'll blow it up for you good people. Blow it up. We're going to blow it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it is. Uh, one of the things when Beer was uh, watching uh, the, the Rambo movie is uh, Rambo, uh, very first uh, part of the movie, he's trying to find an old friend of his uh, from the Vietnam days. Coming into the city there with uh, Brian Dennehy is the sheriff and all that sort of stuff. Anyways, very first part of the movie, he's coming in, uh, trying to find a friend of his. Uh, he had died at, at some point. He was like, that was the only guy left. So I'm wondering if, like, a number of the, um, number of the characters in the book here, like, all of his, all of his Vietnam buddies there that had died. Uh, spoiler alert. Sorry about that, people. But, uh, yeah, there you go. Looks like a Rambo is hiding out in the woods. Watch out for those banana spiders. Uh, going through the river, uh, carrying a guy on his back. Poor guy. Oh, look out. Look out, Viet Cong. He's got a, got a grenade there. There you go. I, I'm assuming this is kind of a montage. Se montage! Montage sequence there. So, there you go. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Actually, does kind of look like a very young uh, uh, Sylvester Stallone out there. There you go. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Watch out for the guy with the gun, though. Beer always watches out for that. Always, always, always. Yes, indeed. And go check out, go check out the game. Don't, don't get it uh, um, crossed up with, uh, where is it here? Our good friend, uh, Mick. Mick Rambo. Oh, did I, did I lose Mick Rambo? There we go, there is Mick. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have the, the Mick Rambo stuff out here. <laughs> All right. Alright, anyways, let me see. What was the... There was one other one as well. Hold on, people. Beer with beer. Do, 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 do. No, not that one. No, not that one. Ah, here we go. Yes, indeed. Uh, the classic. The classic out there. Uh, the uh, Jawbreakers. The new Jawbreakers. I hope, I hope, uh, poor, um... Uh, B-Money out there finally got his, uh, his Jawbreakers 3 book. Uh, Jawbreakers 4, uh, 5 new pages. He says, hi everyone. Hi, ya boy. Uh, 5 of the additional, four, uh, 14 additional pages have been completed. Uh, thanks, Richard. Well, wow, that was a, a very brief one. I wish that he would have... Let's see, can I... Let's see if I can get any... Clue. Nope, that's it. That's the closest... It takes the whole thing, too. That's the closest bear can get here, so... Enjoy it. Enjoy it from afar. Afar. Afar, arr, like a pirate, yarr. Uh, let's see, uh, uh, let's see, uh, Grant's here, uh, great to see Grant out here. Uh, Melissa is here as well, good to see, good to see. Uh, let's see, uh, P Money says, uh, my youngest asks why everyone in chat uh, is a moderate. Is, is everybody? Oh my cow, Peter needs to start taking away some wrenches here. <laughs> uh, my wife says uh, his big claws accidentally made everyone a mod. Yes, indeed, there we go, that is... That is true. That is true. Beer actually has had a very uh, strict moderator policy out here. Very strict. Unfortunately, it's gotten away from beer here. Isn't he? Where everybody, everybody is a moderator. Except for uh, poor Marco for Anthony, who's been, um, who's been uh, deleted out here. Uh-oh, am I losing, am I losing frames? What's going on here? Hold on one second here, people. Stream call. Error poor... It looks like it's doing fine. What the hell, YouTube? Come on, man. Get your thing together here. Uh, let's see. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Where am I? Where am I? Uh, uh, Melissa is fashionable. Well, that's all right. Just like the title. <laughs> yes, indeed. <clears throat> OP Money's two daughters has waved at the Lester sisters. Yes, indeed. There we go. Not, not at beer. That's all right. That's fine. That's fine. Oh yeah, the the uh, where was it? Let me let me put it back on the Mick Rambo uh, again. Uh, if you go to search for whoops, not that one. That's a funny one too. Uh, if you go to search for uh, first kill on Indiegogo, you're not gonna find it. If you search for Rambo, you're gonna come up with Mick Rambo. I uh, didn't make any money, unfortunately, probably because um, uh, the, maybe the premise there. Who knows? Who can knows out there? But there you go. There is there is a Mick Rambo. <coughs> A Jawbreakers Forever, says P-Money, had the best price for a comic book ever. 
that, that was the one at one dollar, right? I think so. Was was that the one at one dollar? If beer remembers correctly, I, th I think so. I think so. Because beer ended up getting the other the other book as well. What was that? Uh, Impossible Stars. So uh, yeah, had to pay a little extra for that one there. Uh, let's see. Barbecue, gun, barbecue gun flavor. Okay, there we go. Uh, Miguel, great to see Miguel. Uh, what is the theme of tonight? Oh man, putting a lot of stress on beer here. Uh, 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 we could, we could, let's let's do the let's do the Disney stuff here. We could talk about some of the crazy, crazy Disney stuff out here. Let's beer figure out where he's at here. Do the thing with the thing here. One second. Go back. No, not that. Oh, for crying out loud. One of these days. Got, got twisted and turned around. Not turned around. Turned. Turned around. No, not that one. Okay, where am I? Come on, beer. The thing with the thing. Where is my mouse? Where is my mouse? There it is. Okay, let's see. Get off the month of... I get back to the news. Get back to the news for you good people. Yes, indeed. A Grant did a miss a mod day. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Even Miguel, long time, long time listener Miguel out there is not even a moderator. Might need to change that someday. Might need to change that. <laughs> you get a wrench. You get a wrench. You get a... No, no, we're not handing out wrenches here. Uh, the theme is comic books. Eh, kind of, sort of. We'll, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. Uh, don't throw wrenches at everyone. No, no. If you dodge a wrench... You can dodge a ball. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Bear's never tried that, though. Ah. Uh, one of Bear's... <clears throat> this is probably going to go down as one of Bear's probably favorite news stories of the year so far. Probably so far out here. Uh, bounding into comics, the great... The great Spencer McCooley out here. Uh, Francis... <laughs> I can't... <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, France's Minister of Armed Forces strongly condemns the depiction of country's military as illegal vibranium thesis in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. That's right, France putting down their foot and saying, you know, gosh darn it, we did not steal that made-up substance from a fictional movie out there. That wasn't us. That wasn't us. Uh, having already disappointed moviegoers and Marvel fans alike, a Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, I, I believe, I believe Jimmy Cricket's favorite movie, uh, is now drawing geopolitical flag from Francis, from France, ah, oh, for crying out loud, Minister of Armed Forces, uh, over its depiction of his country's military as underhanded vibranium thieves out there. Urgh. Uh, taking place uh, just five minutes into the widely panned Marvel Cinematic Universe entry of uh, the scene which drew the ire of the recently elected uh, 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 Mr. Frenchy out here. I'm not even going to try that one. Uh, uh, sees Wakanda's Queen Romanda appear before a United Nations panel. Oh, for crying out loud. This is this is the one reason why the movie... Uh, many, many, many reasons, but... Um, uh, just take a look at this for a second. Uh, wh what is the photo? We've talked about this before. Talked about it. Made a whole whole episode on it here. What the heck is the focus of this shot here? Can anybody tell me? I mean, supposedly, supposedly it's supposed to be Queen. Um, Queen, what's her face? Uh, uh Ray, Raymonda, Ray, Raymonda, Raymonda out there. It's supposed to be her, but she's. I, I don't know, maybe on the big screen it's it's bigger than what it is, but uh, a beer can see her. You can see the old lady off there to the left there. Um, uh, wh which one was the, the, what was her name? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, uh, Danny, Danny Guerrero, the guy, the lady off of the um, uh, uh, Walking Dead show. Um, yeah, uh, she's out of focus. Let's see, she's over there off to the right. Uh, the other one... Out of the focus off to the left there. Uh, lens flare, of course. We got the lens flare. And of course, the uh, bright light shining in, which causes all the other stuff to get out of focus. You know, not to make a big deal of it, but, you know, uh, Ebony's skin out there, it's not very reflective as far as uh, lighting and films go, so you got to kind of make sure you get your lighting correct there. Not not backlit at all because it totally blows everything out. You can't tell. Like, who's the, who's the gentleman or the lady off there to the far left? 
or excuse me, the far right there. I don't know. Maybe. It might be something important. You never know. You never know. You never can tell. Because you can't see anything in this dang movie. Because it's all blurry and out of focus. And boca, boca, boca. Oh, let's do boca. Ah, for crying out loud. Urgh. I see, Miguel says, yes, the old days uh, when Bear was a bobo in Yellowstone. And then he moved to Florida. <laughs> Bear is a Florida native. Florida native out here. Get all the dang Yankees out of here. And get a tax, too. Let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe uh, have made up a country. Steal the metal. <laughs> a made up metal from the other made up country. That's true. That's true indeed. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> uh, what is uh, Doom's armor made? I don't know. I have no idea. Anyways, uh, following a chastising from both the ambassadors from both the United States and France uh, regarding her nation's continuing refusal to share its vibranium stores with the world, uh, Queen Ramonda firmly replies to her critics um, by reaffirming Pardon me here. By reaffirming Wakanda's policy to, quote, never trade a vibranium under any circumstance. A quote not because the dangerous potential of vibranium, she explains, but because of the dangerous potential of you. You people. You blank people out there. Mm hmm. We see. What the heck is going on with the. Uh, is this like a. Is this a. Uh, should we go there? Uh, 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 it, it's like a negative uh, clansman out here. It, it, it's okay. Uh, instead of dressing up uh, head to toe in white with covered faces, uh, we're going to dress up in black. Uh -huh, covered head to toe. W w you can only see the eyes. Oh, oh okay. All right. Nothing, nothing bad to see there at all. Again, once again, uh, uh, out of, uh, Angela Bassett, looking awesome there. Still, still has it. Still looking great out there. Uh, she's in focus. Uh, let's see. Uh, poor guy behind her shoulder. Totally out of focus. Um, guy. Uh, people in the... I, I, I don't know. This is a terrible shot. Terrible shot. Anywho. Anywho. Uh, from here, a Queen of Romanda's speech is interspersed with a flashback scene. Flashback! Yeah, that's probably another reason why the film didn't... Uh, when, whenever your, your first choice within the first five minutes is a flashback. We gotta do a flashback. It just... Um, one of the things that you're taught, if you're, if you're writing a script out there, uh, basically, uh, if you need to do a flashback, make sure it's vitally important to whatever story you're doing. Because otherwise, you're taking uh, essentially the story, the... Uh, a sort of momentum that you have in the story, and you're completely slamming the brakes on it, and, okay, let's flash back to something else. So, anyways, long story short there. Let's see, interspersed with a flashback scene of unidentified Western military force undertaking an illegal raid of a Wakanda mining facility. Uh, however, their efforts are quickly thwarted by a handful of, uh, a Dora... Dora Mala? Malay? Tori Malay. We'll go with that. What the heck? Uh, as Wakanda's women's warriors are shown putting a def uh, decisive end to the attempted theft, uh, Queen Romanda is shown informing the panel, quote, Last night there was another attack on one of our outreach facilities. A proof of the involvement of a member state is being uploaded to your mobile devices as we speak. And what the heck is going on here? Oh, uh, for crying out loud, we got a meal. Oh, okay, okay, all right, all right. Let's see, uh, a team of French soldiers is brought before the UN in Black Panther. Uh, what the? Like, like... <laughs> okay, forget the kneeling. I, I, we put that off to the side, uh, yada, yada, yada. What, uh, look at all these guys here. Look, I... Uh, Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, all beer guts, especially the guy in the middle there. Are these, are special, like, elite forces? Yeah, what are they elite in? Like, eating donuts? Like, what the hell's going on here? Look at that. Look, we were... <laughs> uh, maybe they ate too many, um, um, 
What, what do they eat in France over there? Too many baguettes. Too many baguettes. Eat too many baguettes before they went out on their on their mission and um, was trying to rappel down, probably probably upside down and got you know a stomach ache or something. Oh, oh, play blue! I can't do this no more. Uh, and then they got caught or something like that. And they says, okay, uh, okay, hold on, but time out, time out. How the hell did you get like a bunch of prisoners into the UN without anybody knowing? Like, don't they have any security there? Like, how they? Okay, we're gonna march these, <laughs> march these soldiers through, all handcuffed behind their back. Nobody's gonna know through the UN. Okay, all right. Ah, uh, 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 this stupid movie. MREs, maybe says Melissa. Maybe that's a lot of MREs. That's a lot. Actually, the the French MREs are probably pretty um, uh, pretty well stacked. You know, they got their um. Uh, your holidays sauce and, um, uh, you know, some snails, probably, some caviar, uh, you know, prob probably a good, a pretty good pack out there. Probably a pretty good pack out there. Let's see, Amy says Doom would be able to do something with the metal and tech. Yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah, they need they uh, need to maybe not be backlit every third shot. Yeah, probably. Once again, here we go, backlit. Why? Well, actually, what was it? I, actually, it's a little bit. Yeah. Well, kind of, sorta. Actually, that's better. That's a whole lot better than some of the other stuff here. So, there we go. <coughs> High fat content. Yes, indeed. <laughs> High fat content. <laughs> We want to make sure that they have enough fat, so, um, you know, when they get shot, it doesn't go all the way through them. It just kind of stops in their belly there. Stops in their belly. <laughs> they got Arctic MREs by mistake out there. I mean, bears just take a look at uh, just a random shot that they have, and I'm like, wait a minute, they're like, these are a bunch of fat. Fat you-know-whats out there. Holy cow. These are not, not these special forces. Well, maybe from France, maybe they are the best special forces that they can set. Well, let, let's get in. Let's get into it here. Let's get into it here. <laughs> there we go. There's another backlit shot. Oh, for crying out loud! Why are they all bald? What's going on here? Has everybody got cancer? Does this vibranium cause cancer? What's going on here, man? Oh, while the UN members are frantically rush to check their devices. By the way, yeah, you, like hacked into their phones or something. I ah, oh, for crying out loud. Uh, whatever. Uh, the Dore Male appear with the now captured thieves in tow, uh, force forcing them to kneel. <coughs> uh, before the panel, uh, Dora, uh, for crying out, I can't pronounce any of this, uh, turns to the French ambassador and in her native tongue uh, tells her, You're welcome out there. Let our gracious response to this encourage. Uh, uh, incur incursion, rather, a uh, be an olive branch, uh, she declares, uh, as she returns the French soldiers to their nation of origin. Well, uh, the UN is headquartered in the United States, so they weren't really returned to France, but okay, fine, whatever. Uh, further attempts on our uh, resources will be considered an act of aggression, and that's with a much steeper response. Well, you got nukes? France does. France got plenty of them. Uh, taking notice, uh, taking notice of French journalist uh, Jean Bexon's February 11th sharing of the scene on Twitter, uh, uh, the armed forces fellow there retweeted the cl uh, clip and declared, "I I strongly condemn this misleading and false representation of our armed forces." Uh, clearly unhappy with the film's implication that France does not care for African nations. Yeah, that's kind of a sticking point there. Uh, the minister added, I think and pay tribute to the 58 French soldiers who died defending Mali at its request against Islamic terrorist groups. Can we even say that? Are we even allowed to say that? By the way, where are all of the Islamic terrorist groups in the Wakanda region? One wonders. One wonders out there. There we go. Uh, what, a great, what a great response. What a great response out there. Very cool. Is this the French ambassador? She doesn't even look French. Can we at least get a French ambassador that looks French? I, I mean, I know the guy that directed the movie isn't, you know, blah, 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 blah. but can we at least get a French lady? I mean, that's all. That's all. Not, not you know, uh, uh, the third person that walked in during the casting section. Like, ah, oh, yeah, sure, we'll take her. Sure, whatever. 
I reached uh, for comment on uh, the minister's assertion by the AFP. Uh, the French defen uh, Defense Ministry explained that uh, though they are not calling for censorship of the work, there you go, very good, uh, no revisionism uh, can be allowed about uh, France's recent, recent actions in Mali. Uh, we intervened at the country's own request uh, to fight armed terrorist groups. Far from the story told in this film, namely a French army coming to pillage natural resources. Yeah, that's kind of a sticking point uh, for some folks out there. Uh, as of writing, neither Marvel nor Disney have publicly responded to the condemnation out there. Once again, what the hell is going on with this frame? I guess we're supposed to focus on the hand and not the butt. The butt is not lit up quite right, so we're not supposed to focus on the black butt. We're supposed to focus on the hand. The hand out here. Yes, indeed, not the butt. No butts allowed. No butts allowed out there. Anyways, there we are. One of Bear's favorite. <laughs> the French. Uh, French Minister of Armed Forces. No, uh, look, people, we actually went to... Africa to help people, not to steal anything out there. There we go. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 ay. Uh, let's see. The French... Oh, thank you, Grant. The uh, French Foreign Legion would have made more sense. That's true. Uh, they could deny it. Uh, it was them. That's true. That is true. Uh, these characters sound uh, kind of pretty awful. Uh, sound petty and pretty awful. Sound petty and awful. One of these days. I don't know. I don't see what makes any of them selfless, kind, or heroic out there. I'm assuming in the movie here. I'm assuming in the movie here. And Little Bassett's still looking good. Still looking good after all these years. But yeah, what a terrible, terrible film. We'll get, in, we'll get into that in just a second here. But actually, Bear, I kind of... I didn't didn't intend for this to be a theme of the show here, but let's go ahead and get right on into it. And of course, our good friends out here at Deadline, uh, trying to um, do the best that they can out there to um, uh, kind of rewrite history just a little bit. Hey, you know, yeah, we 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 can't say we lost. We just we just succumbed. To a democracy. Ah, oh, there's just too much democracy. Our precious democracy. Oh, we just couldn't, couldn't do it. It was so utopia. It just, it just wasn't going to work. It wasn't going to work. Oh, Ron Meatball out here. Hey, hey, fellas. Hey, what's going on? Oh, let's see. Ah, uh, let's see. Who is this? Uh, Michael Cripley out here at Deadline. Ah. Uh, yeah, stenographers for Hollywood. <clears throat> it was bound to happen. I'll grab a drink. <sighs> it was bound to happen. Sooner or later, uh, on Monday, the Walt Disney Company's corporate privilege in Florida finally succumbed to its democracy problem. No, it succumbed to uh, the actual legislature out there saying, nuts to you guys, we're taking it all back. Uh, anyways, <clears throat> uh, specifically, uh, Florida Governor Ron Red Rum Death Santis out there uh, signed legislation that stripped Disney of its highly unusual control over a special entity. The Reedy Creek Improvement District that had the power to tax, spend, plan, zone, generally govern, uh, uh, police force, armed forces, yada 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 yada, uh, nuclear stuff as well, uh, surrounding Disney's Florida's theme parks. Uh, in the narrow terms, uh, the move stemmed from a dispute over Disney's stance over a Florida parental rights law. Why just say parental rights law? What was it? Uh, parental rights and education or something to that effect. Uh, branded. Who branded it? Who branded it, Deadline? Who? Hmm. Uh, by opponents. Wh which opponents would those be? Wh can we name them? Can we name one? At least one. I don't care who. Uh, just one. I just want to know who the opponents are. Uh, that limits uh, sex and gender education to younger children. Uh, anybody want to expand that? Anybody have a hand raised out there? I, I, it's, a, it's a good idea. That's a good idea. Why is this controversial? Why is it branded? Why is it branded stuff? You morons. Uh, 
Uh, but in truth, ha ha ha, here we go. Uh, the revocation was long overdue, a rupture in the corporate slash political structure uh, that concealed a hidden flaw. You see, people, the Reedy Creek was a utopian construct. Ah, now we get to the nut of it. Endowed with powers, including the right to generate nuclear power if needed. Eh, you know, no biggie. Uh, they were granted 55 years ago in the expectation that successors to the company's founder, Walt Disney, would fulfill his plan to build a techno-based paradise. Uh, instead, we've got the two Bobs and, uh, what was, what was, who was the guy that did that before? Eisner as well, a couple other people. Uh, they just, you know, shoved up Walt Disney's uh, uh, frozen chirogenic head into the freezer and says, All right, thanks, Walt. We'll see you in 500 years or so. Peace out. A, a truly functional experimental prototype community of tomorrow that would be Epcot people. Uh, Florida's then governor, uh, Hayden Burns, what a name, uh, called it the greatest single announcement in the history of the state. Eh, uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, um... <laughs> Maybe going from a uh, Spanish-held territory to French-held territory? That'd be a good announcement. Then from France to English. Then from English to the United States. No, wait, no. Uh, uh, from, uh, let's see, did they? I don't know. There's so many dang flags out there from Florida. Bear loses track. Of course, things didn't quite work out as planned. Uh, by the time uh, the author got a close look at the Reedy Creep apparatus out there, uh, a reporter from the Wall Street Journal in 1985, the Disney Company, uh, now under chief executive uh, Michael Eisner, Michael Eisner had already discovered a structural fault that would never be fixed way back in 1985, so they couldn't let it go back then? Nah, nah. Uh, Eisner and his fellow executives called the one-man-one-vote problem. That's right, Disney doesn't want one man, one vote. Or let's just say one person, one vote out here. They just don't like that. They just don't like that at all. Uh, essentially, Reedy Creek, which uh, embraced most of the 28,000 acres owned by Disney in Central Florida, was a corporate dictatorship. Hmm. Still carrying their water, their deadline. Uh, when I visited, uh, voting control of the district was vested in about 50 full-time residents. Almost all employees who had been deeded small plots, allowing them to participate in a full democracy uh, that was entirely controlled by the company. Hmm, where, where was all of that in your past reportage deadline? I I anywhere? I I you didn't mention any of that anywhere at all. Only afterwards. Only, a only afterwards, the, much much like the Wu flu escaping from the Wu out there. Oh, yeah, oh, of course, we knew it all along. Yeah, no, no, we were all, we were all on the same page. We didn't, we didn't try to, you know, take people's livelihoods away or anything like that. He was beers getting on a sidetrack here. Uh, as conceived by Walt, a political control was sine non qua uh, sine qua non. Sine qua non. Beer is not up to date in his... Latin out here. <clears throat> uh, if Imagineers were to design a perfect world, uh, technocrats would create order. Where have we heard that before? Where have we heard that before? Uh, to, the, to the Bitcoin volcano. For all of you. Uh, but let the inhabitants vote uh, uh, too freely. But let the uh, too f oh, uh, but let the inhabitants vote too freely and things would inevitably get messy. Ah, that poor or democracy, or worse, fall apart. Walt well, wasn't against people voting. Uh, he just didn't want them hanging their dirty laundry out. Uh, as Disney developed its alliance with theme parks and resort, the democracy problem TM was never fully resolved. Uh, permanent residents were permitted in pockets like the Golden Oak uh, development and the planned community. I don't know if anybody's been to the celebration. That is a weird place. Um, if anybody has seen, um, uh, the Truman Show, um, Truman Show? yeah, the Truman Show with Jim Carrey and all that sort of, actually they had it kind of up in, um, northern Florida actually, but, uh, very, very similar, very planned community, everything's all, I mean, you're talking about don't want to see other people's dirty laundry, you see everybody's dirty laundry in celebration, that is a very, very weird, weird place to be. Uh, let's see. Uh, with careful concessions to democratic involvement. 
Uh, but once anticipated mass re uh, residential development, never mind Walt's utopia, with a large population living the dream, never materialized. Uh, instead, Disney remained an undigested lump. In Florida's body politic. What? Uh, it enjoyed special powers through the Reedy Creek, but those powers would be diluted if real-life Floridians were permitted to inhabit the district. But they're not. <laughs> That's the point. It's all owned by Disney, which you just said was a corporate dictatorship. Eh, whatever. Uh, as we learn this week, uh, they would be lost if Disney tried to push all its lovely ideals on elected representatives in the rest of the state. Well, how many, how many elected people are in Disney? In this in this corporate dictatorship, how many? How, if Disney does something and the Florida residents are against it, uh, how are they able to express that? Um, I don't know. It didn't know. Oh, thank you, Amy. Amy, Amy corrects beer out here. A sine qua non without which not. Without which not. Without which not. Yes, indeed. There we go. Totally makes sense. Totally, totally makes sense. Yeah, once again, Beer has a hard enough time with with English. In, in a little bit of Espanol out there. Uh, but, uh, uh, Italian, or Latin, I should say. Uh, not, not so much. Not, not so much. <clears throat> Oh, thank you, Amy. Something absolutely necessary or indispensable. But let's try that. As conceived by Walt, political control was something absolutely necessary or indispensable if Imagineers were to design a perfect world. Why couldn't you just say that? Why you gotta be like, oh, look at me, I'm Mr. I'm Mr. Smarty. I, I work for, what was it here? The Wall Street Journal way back in 1985. I, I, know, all, I know all the words out there. I know, I know, I know Latin, I know English, all, all the words, all the words. When you're trying to write, you, you try to write to the widest possible audience. You know, you might have, you know, some stuff that are, you know, specific to whatever you're trying to talk about. You gotta actually use specific words for some of that stuff that people might not know specifically, but you can't kind of explain it a little bit, but nah, nah, we gotta... Actually, uh, beer might actually be able to look this up. Hold on, let's see if, let's see if we can look this up. Nope, can't stop for crying out loud. Oh, all the words, all the words. Uh. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, water went down the wrong pipe there. Wrong pipe. <coughs> there we go. Uh, anyways, is Disney listening? Uh, would, would Disney out there listen to people that uh, might have a problem? Maybe if they're trying to push their ideals, or uh, maybe just their stupid ideas. Do, do, do you maybe think they might listen? Uh, let's go to Bounding into Comics here. Uh, and the great uh, Jacob Smith out here. <clears throat> Good lord, that's an ugly face. And Man in the Wasp, Quantumania writer Jeff Loveness. A rejects a negative reaction to his film. He is right! Gosh darn it, Modoc is great. Great, great. Modoc butt. Uh, the jury is in, and it's guilty. Guilty with a sentence of death out there. Uh, 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 Ant Man and the Wasp is not only a bust with critics, but a bust with audiences as well. There we go. Poor, poor Paul Rudd. Poor, poor Paul Rudd. He's like, what the hell did I just get myself into? I signed myself up to three more movies of this. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> and the latest of the long-running um, cinematic... That's true, the cinematic opera. I would say cinematic soap opera. Yeah, I would say cinematic soap opera. Uh, in history, uh, has now been out for nearly two weeks. And the reaction to the film has been mild at best. Uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp uh, currently enjoys the second lowest... Rotten Tomatoes uh, score among any MCU film with 48%. I wonder which is the lowest. I wonder if it was, um, probably at Thor 2? Maybe Thor, Thor 2 out there, I don't know. Uh, the box office hasn't seen 
uh, hasn't been any better for the film uh, in its second week. Uh, Quantum Mania dropped 70%. We talked about that last time. Uh, marking it the biggest uh, second weekend uh, drop in MCU history. Well, uh, that's the thing about history is there's always the next time. We'll find out the next time what's, what's going on. Uh, the film is currently being outpaced by last year's worst before. Actually, I think I've got that here. Hold on. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Here we go. Oops, not that one. There we go. There we go. Oh, sorry, people. I've crossed out. Crossed out the uh, the chat here. One second. Oh, for crying out loud! One of these days, people, we will do a professional show. There we go. Try to get some of the chat in there. Uh, let's see, uh, the film is currently being outpaced by last year's worst performing MCU film, that would be Thor Love and Thunder, oh boy, uh, by over $66 million domestically. Uh, the film is currently pacing to have a final box office gross of less than $600 million worldwide. Be interested to see what the, what the cost of the film was. Probably, I don't know, uh, they ended up cut. well, I don't want to say they cut. They moved a lot of the resources. Uh, you, you saw all the resources that they moved from Ant-Man over to uh, Wakanda Forever. They had to move some uh, visual effects stuff over to uh, Wakanda Forever. And boy, oh boy, does it show up on screen. I mean, everybody bare notes says, uh, hey, you know, that, that Black Panther movie wasn't all, all that uh, fire out there. But uh, man, oh man, did you see those special effects? Groundbreaking. Groundbreaking. Eh, not so much. Not, not so much. Let's see, uh, despite opening stronger than uh, 2018's Ant-Man and the Wasp, let's see if we got that here. There we go, there, there's the two there. Oh, there's Thunder, uh, did I get the wrong one? Oh, no, that was the right one. I'm sorry, people. Pardon me, people. Uh, let's see, uh, despite opening stronger than uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp, the film is on pace to finish with a lower box office than its predecessor, uh, thanks in large part to the negative word of mouth associated with the film, you think? Uh, with such an underperforming film, uh, one can't help but point the finger at the film's uh, screenwriting as the source of the movie's problem out there. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, Jeff Loveness, uh, who has never written a feature film previously, Holy cow, really? Oh my my. Anyways. <clears throat> Let's see, um, uh, was tasked with leading the MCU into Phase 5 after only writing episodes of Jimmy Kimmel Live? Uh, I, is that even writing? And Rick and Morty, oh, for crying out loud, Rick and Morty. The, the, the bane of, of entertainment's existence out here. I can't, I uh, can't take Rick and Morty. Let's see, the, the one guy got, let's see, arrested for, uh, what was it, domestic abuse or something like that. You know, just beating up his girlfriend or his, his love interest or whatever, no big deal. Let's see, the other, uh, I can't remember her name, um, uh, the lady that was the showrunner and head writer for She-Hulk. Yeah, She-Hulk out there came from Rick and Morty, so, um, yeah, boy oh boy, just, just knocking him out of the park there, Rick and Morty, just doing a great job. Never understood that show. I'm sorry if people out there love their Rick and Morty. Bear can't stand that show. Can't even understand it. It's like, okay, it's freaking um, Back to the Future, but with weird stuff, and they, they, they dimension travel, and there's like 25 Ricks and 35 Mortys, and they kill one in one dimension, but they lie in the other. I don't know. It's a stupid show. Uh, let's see, I love this in an interview with the far-left media outlet, The Daily Beast. Who else are you going to talk to? I talked about the film's negative reception uh, by stating that he's proud of the film's writing. Of course, he wrote it. And disagrees with the negative backlash the film has received. Well, at least, at least they managed to put things in focus in this shot. They did that. What the heck is going on with Evangela Lilly's hair? What the heck is going on, man? Come on, man! Beautiful lady out there. What's going on with her hair? Ah, I tell you what. <clears throat> I love this as, to be honest. No, sir, please don't. Those reviews took me by surprise. It was a pretty low spot. Uh, those were not good reviews. And I was like, what the? What the? What the? Uh, I wrote for Rick and Morty. This should be like, you know, past an avatar now. Uh, he continued, I'm really proud of what I wrote for uh, Jonathan Majors. 
and Michelle Pfeiffer lighting up every movie she is in. And I thought, it, it didn't have anything to do with you, genius. And I thought that was good stuff, you know? And so I was just despondent. I was really sad about it. <laughs> and despite the uh, results of his cinematic flop, Levna says that he's got into better spirits after he attended a public screening of the film and listened to, as audience members laughed at many of the jokes he added to the script. Are you sure they weren't laughing at the just ridiculousness of your script? Maybe, maybe they were doing that. He explained, I went to a showing, and an audience was laughing. Wow. It was one of those Sullivan travels, watching the movie with the uh, prisoner's moments. What? Huh? Watching the movie with the prisoner's moments. Sullivan's travels. Huh? What the hell are you talking? I don't know. I I'm like, uh, GD, uh, no, the reviews are wrong. I'm right. Modoc is great. Hashtag Modoc, but I'm pretty happy with it overall, and I think I learned... How to take a punch this week? Well, I, I, sir, I will. Beer will be right there in L.A. And, and, and will challenge you on that. I want to see how well, sir. I want to see how well you do take a punch, or twenty. Uh, he concluded, and now that I learn, that's not so bad. I can just get on with making things. Well, I take you up on the challenge, sir. A loveness confirmed last week that he's sticking with Marvel Studios, and he's currently developing. Oh my God. <laughs> Uh, well, you can save your, save your money now, people. Uh, developing the script for Avengers, the Kang Dynasty, which is slated to come out in 2025, 20, or 26 or 27, who knows, they keep pushing stuff back. Oh, uh, pending reshoots and delays. Uh, Loveness recently revealed that Marvel Studios doesn't have a plan for that film, as they are just winging it. Oh boy! We're in the process of just figuring that out. I'm so far behind on my Avengers script, but I'll tell you when we've got it figured out. Uh, you only got, uh, you only got to, uh, no, a year, year and a half. That's all. Follow up one of the biggest films of all time. I'm sure it'll work out just fine. Uh, he added, "We've got a plan, eh, and we've got a story." Eh. But the goal right now, without giving too much away, is to show the true versatility and passion that Jonathan Major has. No, it's to deliver a good film. He'll deliver the passion on screen. Don't worry about it. Had nothing to do with you. Eleveness also confirmed that the only plan for Phase 5 of the MCU is to push Jonathan Majors to superstardom in his role of Kang the Conqueror, who was conquered by a bunch of ants. So, uh, it's not really working out well. I truly feel like I'm the luckiest guy in the world. Yeah, because you're a terrible writer. The beer could probably write rings around. Uh, and, and your only claim to fame is Jimmy Kimmel Live. A noted blackface enthusiast, Jimmy Kimmel Live out there. Uh, doing the Oscars. Hopefully, hopefully he doesn't... Actually, no, I hope he does get slapped. Hopefully Will Smith is there. What'd you say about uh, alopecia? Uh, let's see, uh, because I get to write for the most exciting young actor that I've seen in a long, long time, and so the short answer is that I can't say anything, but the big answer is that Kang is legion. Yay. Again, fine actor, uh, but y you do have to have a good script for him. Again, it's a little out of focus, sort of, kinda. I mean, you can see his face. Whole lot of stuff going on in the background. Boca, boca, boca. <sighs> boca, boca, boca. <sighs> Anywho, let's see what the chat has to say. Let's see. Um, wait, was Ob uh, Epcot supposed to be an actual city that people lived in? Yes, it was. Uh, Epcot was the 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 uh, what we <laughs> some people call it the golf ball. Because uh, it looks kind of like a giant golf ball. The, the sort of golf ball with the world communities and all that sort of... That was basically kind of the center uh, of the giant community that they were supposed to build. If people kind of know Disney World a little bit, Epcot's kind of off on its own little little spot over there. Uh, so they're going to be developing all of that as kind of like a... Like what he said, like a utopian community. Again, uh, Walt Disney died before any of that could happen, but that was kind of the sort of thought, idea behind having Reedy Creek out there, 
how they were going to do that. Basically, Disney was its own little, um, Bear says kind of think of it as like uh, Indian reservation. So it's own little sort of um, uh, deal. They, they had fire, they had police, they had, you know, everything. There. That was all theirs. They, they controlled it all. So, yeah, Epcot was supposed to do that. They were supposed to develop it out and all that sort of stuff. Never ended up happening. They just did the theme park. Uh, the theme park was just supposed to be the draw for Epcot. You know, Epcot was supposed to be the, the giant uh, community. You know, everybody's going to live in harmony, yada, yada, yada. Future world, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it never never came to be, so um, Epcot became the sort of second Disney park. You know, it's kind of the sort of uh, world fair of, uh, of of Disney World there. Kind of interesting, kind of interesting history behind all that. Let's see, uh, let's see. Uh, a corporate dictatorship ruling over the lives of actual American citizens. Well, they wouldn't be American citizens anymore. They would be, again, like, uh, like Indians living on an Indian reservation. They would be... Um, how would you pronounce it? Americans? Uh, D Disneyans? <laughs> from the tribe of Disney, I suppose? From the uh, Epcotians? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, yeah, basically it's it's its own little thing. Um, I'm trying to think of another better way of uh, talking about it. Yeah, Indian, Indian Reservation is probably the closest closest way to do that. Yeah, they, they essentially had a full run, full run of the place. Bear, Bear wanted to do a, um, wanted to do a screenplay of, uh, uh, basically a murder in a park kind of uh, take off on Disney there where you know they, they had a murder in the, in the park and they you know sort of begrudgingly allow the the murder investigator to come in but it was all kind of hidden behind the park sort of stuff I kind of think of like um what was that uh, uh Beverly Hills cop was that three is that the one that they had in the theme park there so kind of that sort of same sort of situation there uh, where you know, even though the investigator that was part of the city or the state there goes into the Disney World type place, they weren't really in charge. They couldn't really, you know, charge anybody or anything like that. So, never really got off the ground, but, uh, yeah, there you go. There you are. Uh, suddenly, celebration is even weirder than it already was. Yes, indeed. <laughs> there we are. Uh, you're not alone, just on a roll. Well, thank you, Grant. Thank you, Grant. <clears throat> oh, Miguel says, uh, Man, those new movie and comics are so bad. Uh, better buy some survival and combat stuff. A bear needs a Rambo knife to open the Rambo CG comic. Actually, bear's got a pretty nice, pretty nice claws. Pretty nice claws, but he does rely on the old, the old trusty knife out there. Yeah, I might have to get a Rambo knife. That would be cool. It's, pretty, it's kind of interesting reading about or listening to that um, uh, in in the movie. Uh, they actually had the Rambo knife was actually specially made. Uh, Miguel probably already knows about this, but uh, actually specially made for uh, the movie. It had a whole bunch of survival stuff in the in the handle of the blade there. Uh, more widely known now, but uh, back then it was kind of a first kind of a first thing. So everybody started to copy copy the blade and everything and all the all the stuff that came with it. So. Um, Kind of interesting. That's a that's a good idea, Miguel. I should have like a a big uh, a big Rambo knife or a big uh, what, what what is it? Um, crocod crocodile Dundee knife. Why? There we go. Okay, everyone here needs to get together and make a movie. That's neat. Uh, 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 just just give Bear a hundred million dollars and he'll do all right. He'll do all right. <clears throat> Subjects serfs of the Magic Kingdom out there. <laughs> this this is true. This is true. Well, uh, uh, speaking, speaking of um, uh, books, books out there, to Miguel's point, my good friends at uh, Deadline here, a James Bond books edited to avoid offense to modern audiences. Let's see, this is uh, Bruce Herring, Bruce Herring out here. James Bond has been censored, not stirred. A report indicates that Ian Fleming's rib, rib line? What? Hold on, let me, I gotta figure out, what does this mean? That oh, doesn't tell him. Okay, whatever. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll just, we'll just, yeah, whatever. <clears throat> a report indicates that Ian Fleming's a rib, right, right bulb? Whatever. Uh, James Bond books have been rewritten to accommodate 20th, 21st century 
sensitive. We're so sensitive. Uh, removing a number of racial references ahead of the 70th, 70th anniversary uh, this spring. Beer was trying to remember, like, what racial references were they talking about? Um, the only one, was it You Only Live? Was it You Only Live Once? No, no, no. What, what was the one in the bayou? I'm trying to remember that one. Um, with the voodoo and all that sort of stuff. They had a couple references there, but it was like... If you think of James Bond books with the, the Ian Fleming stuff, it's basically a travelogue with a guy killing people. You know, so instead of like, um, instead of like, uh, what was the guy named? Uh, Anthea Bourdain, or he'd go around to the different places and eat food. And instead of eating food, he would just shoot people. Uh, it's kind of that sort of steal. So basically, if Bear kind of remembers correctly, it was like um, uh, uh, talking in slang. So they were kind of talking how, how normal people in, um, in the bayou would be talking. So... There might be a couple other references there, but it wasn't. He wasn't slinging n words left and right or anything like that. Uh, the books are expected to be republished in April. Burn them! Burn them all! Uh, Fleming's uh, thrillers from Casino Royale to Octopussy will be re-released this spring after uh, Ian Fleming Productions, the company that owns the literary rights to Fleming's works, commissioned a review by. Sensitive readers, ah, ha, 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 ha. Why, why do they have to kill so many people? Why can't the USSR win? Why? Why can't the Utopians win? <laughs> uh, the news comes amid increased scrutiny in the publishing industry. The Ron Dahl series of a beloved Charlie and the Chocolate Factory were recently revealed to have undergone a similar review. Yeah, we all, we all know Charlie just dropping those end bombs left and right. The republished Bond novels will include a disclaimer. This book was written at a time when terms and attitudes, which might be considered offensive by modern readers, were commonplace. Those bunch of racists back then. Uh, the number of updates have been made in this edition, while keeping it as close as possible to the original text in the period in which it's set, except for all those words uh, that make the book enjoyable uh, instead of, you know, being rewritten by sensitivity readers out there sensitivity readers oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> there was a voodoo james bond villain yeah um uh mr big um what was it uh well no it wasn't yafa koto's character he was um essentially the the, the russians were trying to destabilize the u.s through race relations by uh stealing gold uh from a sunken pirate ship and they were using it to uh, 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 go to, like, voodoo, uh, to call the, uh, you know, create a bunch of disturbances in the South and whatnot, and that sort of deal. I try, it wasn't Mr. Big. I'm trying to remember the, the voodoo guy. He was bigger in the movie than he was in the book. God, what was the name of the movie? Um, it wasn't You Only Live Once, uh, or You Only Live Twice. Um, oh, God. I bear can remember Beer cannot remember, but anyways, yes, there was, there was one. Uh, yeah, they did have, they did have a little James Bond voodoo doll. Yes, indeed. I oh, God, I'm trying to remember the name of the movie. Um, uh, would have come to Beer out, you know, he'd be sleeping tonight and stirred awake. Oh, that's right. It was, you know, couldn't remember. Couldn't remember. Yeah, they had a, they had a, a James Bond voodoo doll where they'd poke him and James was like, I think he was fighting. I forget if he was fighting Mr. Big or whatever. Uh, Yafet Koto. Big, big dude out there. James Bond was fighting him and everything, so. You only live thrice. <laughs> uh, no, guys, I can't, I can't, I can't remember the name of it. Um, it, it was, it was a Roger Moore one. I, I just can't remember. Can't remember the one. Can't remember the one. Anyways. Anywho. Uh, Sean Connery, best Bond. Best Bond out there. That's neat. Maybe followed by uh, Pierce Brosnan. Maybe followed by Pierce. I did like Timothy Dalton. He did pretty good. Uh, Roger Moore, always, always great. Daniel Craig, um, it's like taking a dump in your cereal. I mean, I, I, he would have made a great villain. Daniel Craig would have made a great Bond villain. It is, especially if, if they did kind of the Spectre uh, thing throughout the whole film. He, I think he would have been really good in the Christopher, um, what's his name, Christopher White's. For Wentz, um, a role there in, what was that, Spectre? Um, I, I think he would have done really well as kind of the villain behind the scenes. 
Uh, but put somebody else in there. Uh, Daniel Craig just didn't do... Didn't do that well out there. Yes, indeed. All right, moving along, people. Moving, moving along to sports ball. Got to talk about a little, little sports ball out here, people. Not from the New York Post. Uh, Jimmy Jenna Lemonacini. That would be the Sod Father. The Sod Father. What a great name. What a great name. I would. I, uh, he came to me for some grass tips, and I gave it to him on my. On my daughter's wedding day. Yeah. <sighs> he eviscerates the NHL and NFL. That's why Bear watches the NHL. Uh, handling of Super Bowl field. They didn't do squat. Uh, the sock father is done with the NFL. Well, so is Bear. Several years back. Uh, George Toma, who garnered the, nick the nickname of the longtime groundskeeper, who led the preparation of every Super Bowl field, that said the 2023 finale between the Chiefs and the Eagles was due, was his last due to issues with the NFL. He says, I can't take it anymore, adding that he hasn't been happy with how the NFL responded to field issues at the Super Bowl sites in the past. Me and the league are finished. They can't tell me what to do anymore. We're done. A Toma who retired, here he is, right here. There's the sod father. The sir, they told me. I didn't want to water the grass, but they wanted me to water the grass. And it caused them to slip on oh, my daughter's... Ah, it's our wedding day. Ah. <clears throat> Atoma, who retired after more than 80 years, he probably knows what he's talking about in the groundskeeping business, uh, says that he believes the field at the State Farm Field in Glendale, Arizona, where the Chiefs defeated the Eagles on February 12th, was overwatered in the days leading up to the game, so that the problems... Could have been avoided. There he is, walking the field. Good thing he didn't slip. Oh my goodness. The sad father. Uh, uh, P. Money, we're talking. We're talking about the sad father here. You missed it all. You missed it all. Atoma, who was the out, um, told the out, uh, uh, outlet, blah, 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 one of these days. Toma told the outlet that the field was watered the Wednesday morning before the game and rolled into the stadium on movable tray that housed the uh, grass field for the last time before kickoff four days later. Actually, it's... Where is it here? There we are. There it goes. There's the, there's the stadium there. They can kind of roll out the field. Let it get some sun. It's here in Arizona. It's, <laughs> if you left it outfield... Well, first off, if you had a one outside, I mean, people would just be dying of heat. And secondly, all the grass would die as well. Uh, it's pretty, pretty dry out there. Pretty dry. Let's see, um, <clears throat> uh, so what does he do? Uh, so what he does, uh, Thomas says, referring to Ed Megan, the NH, uh, NFL uh, field director who's in charge of the Super Bowl uh, and worked under Toma for, for years. He waters the hell out of it and puts it right into the stadium, and that's it. Never sees the sunlight again. He can't do that. Uh. Thomas said that the field shouldn't have been watered in the morning and kept outside uh, to dry before it was rolled into the stadium. Should have. Should have, I, I apologize. The natural grass field at Stadium uh, uh, State Farm Stadium has a rollout grass, uh, which we saw there. Uh, the field travels 740 feet uh, when it goes outside. Uh, Toma also claimed that Morgan didn't do squat when it came to uh, sanding the field prior to the game. He sanded it two weeks too late, he said. He had only one sanding. He should have had two or three sandings, but he didn't do squat, and that was it. And not only that... He didn't take care of it. He wouldn't listen to the sad father. Wouldn't listen to me. And he added, the field at the State Farm Stadium also had a rotten smell. Well, that's no way to talk about Rihanna. Uh, due to the tarp that was laid over the natural ryegrass to protect it from rehearsals for the pregame, the halftime, and the postgame shows. Uh, let's see, it goes on. Blah, 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 blah. Atoma said he was told during Super Bowl week the field was starting to decay and rot, though he did not blame the ryegrass for the field sickness. He added that he had used ryegrass for 27 Super Bowls. The field conditions at Super Bowl 2023 were less than ideal, with the Chiefs and Eagles players slipping constantly. A number of players complained about the uh, slickness of the field and its impact on the playing conditions, including e Eagles offensive lineman Jason, or excuse me, Jordan Maltalda. He said it was like playing on a water park. 
on Monday after the Super Bowl. NFL Network's uh, Ian Rappaport said the slippery conditions were much worse in the second half due to the halftime show that stage during Rihanna's 13 minutes performance. Well, I think we know who to blame there. I think we know who to blame. That would be, that would be Rihanna. Rihanna out there. We gotta blame, hashtag blame Rihanna. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> anyways, anyways, let's go on. It goes on. Let's see. The Eagles kicker nearly twisted his ankle when he slid off of a kickoff in the third quarter and fell to the ground in replay footage. Yeah, I blame... Bear blames Rihanna out there. For... For sure. For sure. And that crazy red dress. Craziness out there. Craziness. <clears throat> Bear talking as an old person... This is a vision of things to come. Hmm. Hey, hey, buddy, you don't talk to me like that. I'm going to have you whacked. Whacked like the sad father out here. Hey. Uh, they roll the grass in and out of the building. Yes, they do. Yeah, here it is, right here. So there's the there's the, the helicopter there. But uh, there's the stadium there. There's a big door that's underneath the underneath the sign there. And they just raise the door. They roll the, roll the field out. And then roll it right back on in. So there you go. There you go. Get off my lawn. Get off my lawn. Hey, you gotta get off the lawn. It's too wet. Thank you, Rihanna. On my daughter's, on my daughter's wedding day. How can you ruin my field? Uh, there we are. There, there we are, people. Had to, had to end it on a, on a sports ball note. Well, actually... And I, I don't want to go through all of it. I thought this was a fun story. Uh, the Economist, it's time for Alphabet. Alphabet. I just spin off YouTube. Yes, indeed. Could be worth more than Netflix. Could. Could be out there. Yes, indeed. I, I'll have to link this in the, um, in the description. I don't want to read it all. It's kind of long. Long one there, but somebody's, somebody's asking the question there. Or actually, no, they're making a statement. It is time. It is time. Spin it off. Spin it on off. Maybe Bear would, um, wouldn't be uh, so shadow banned here. <laughs> Good old YouTube. Ah, thanks a lot. Good old YouTube out there. There we go. All right, let's see. Um, a lot happens on that wedding day. It's my only daughter's wedding day. It's a sad father. Sad father. 10 a.m. roll out on the lawn. 12 a.m. lunch. 2 p.m. roll back lawn. 4 p.m. beer. 4 p.m. Yeah, like the sad father says. That's right. That's right. You want to have a, you want to have a good field there, especially on freaking Super Bowl Sunday. Beer didn't watch it. Beer actually, <laughs> believe it or not, was reading um a cyber fraud. Or no, wait, no, I wasn't. Uh, Beer was reading um. Uh, Inglorious Rex, Inglorious Rex, and and uh, Monster Hunter. Read both of them. We did the uh, we did the review head to head there. So beer was beer was checking out both of those. Wanted oh, so much to want to like uh, uh, Monster Hunt too. I'm like ah, come on. You, you you got a great you got a great artist in Matthew Weldon. You know all you got to do is just make sure the story makes sense. And eh, it didn't didn't make sense out of that. Amy is having a field day with this one. <laughs> a P Money only watches the Super Bowl for the commercials. There you go. Yeah, why why do they keep why do they keep interrupting all the commercials for um for for sports stuff? Gosh darn it. Gosh darn it. What 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 was the great what was the great commercial this year, P Money? What was the great Super Bowl 2023 commercial. What was the great Super Bowl commercial for 2022? Anybody remember? Does it even matter? What was the great... Uh, did they even have one in 21? I don't recall. Did they? Oh, yeah, the, the, the Bucks one. The Bucks one. That's right. I don't know. Uh, it, they used to have really good commercials, like the... What was it? The Budweiser uh, uh, Bullfrogs. They had that. They had um, uh, some other interesting ones as well. And then they became... You know, very political at one end, and then very stupid at the other end. Um, I don't know. It, 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 I, you see the Super Bowl commercials, and it's like, you know, it's, it's like sugar. You know, it, it's just, you know, here today, gone tomorrow. Poof. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, that thing was funny. What were we supposed to buy again? I don't know. Eh, whatever. 
Okay. All right. Well, that's fine. That's that's fine. All right. Let me get let me get out of this. Let me get back here. Get back here. Look at that. Look at these great. Look at these great jackets. I mean, this is in black and white. I, I would love to see what this looks like in color. This is some great, great stuff right there. Great stuff right there. It's supposed to be like a. Bill remembers correctly. It's supposed to be like a, a golf tournament. <laughs> it's supposed to be some sort of golf tournament there where the guys are getting some, getting some awards. Getting some awards there. There you go. There's some good stuff. <clears throat> there was a nice commercial about Jesus being caught in the Super Bowl? There was a nice commercial about Jesus. Are you sure it isn't Jesus? It might be Jesus. Being kind to people. And that people should try to show kindness to others. That would be nice. That would be nice. Yes, indeed. I don't know if you'd want to show that on a... I mean, you got to reach a wide audience there, but... Um, uh, you know, uh, a bunch of uh, uh, burly men running into each other and pounding each other and, you know, talking, smack talking out there. I don't know how much, uh, how much Jesus out there might, uh, might think about that. <laughs> That's fine. <clears throat> Apparently most of the media's, media outlets hated the ad. Gee, I wonder why. Hmm. Let's take a, let's take a think process on this one. I, I'm sure if they, I'm sure if they had a a uh, uh, Muhammad loves you all uh, commercial out there, they would be all over themselves, all over themselves. I try to eat in front of homeless people as much as possible to inspire and encourage them. Says Grant. Well, good for you, sir. Very good. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, P money says stupid. Just because the newest commercials are boring and annoying. Doesn't mean they were stupid. Oh, okay. That's, that's P. Money's opinion out there. His opinion out here. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> yeah, I wonder why they hated that. Amy. I wonder, wonder why. Uh, she says, I didn't see the show or the ads at, the, uh, at all, though. I just heard about them. It's just what she heard, I said. Okay, well, there we go. There, there we are. There we are. Well, hopefully, hopefully some people took took uh, uh, some message out of that and um, uh, made made better of themselves out there. Hopefully. Hope. Hopefully out here. All right, let's see. 9.30. How long have I been doing this? Holy cow. An hour and a half. What? That's craziness. I shouldn't be doing this an hour and a half. <sighs> well, you, you got an extra half an hour with beer. With, uh, oh, here's the football talk about the sun, father. And Bear's voice is just, it's about to go here. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> I hope so too, Amy. All right, Bear hopes so too. Yes, indeed. All right. A long, it's a long time, Bear. It's been a long time. Yes, it has. Yes. Yes, it has. Too long. Too, too long. Bear needs a co-host. Be able to take a drink or whatever every once in a while. Clear his throat. Clear Clear his throat. And, and, I gotta get something to eat here. Beer's getting hungry. I gotta get some tacos here, people. It's, it's Taco Wednesday for beer. Yes, indeed. All right, people. Well, beer's going to, going to head out and get some tacos here. Want to thank, want to thank Peabody. Jimmy Cricket. Oh, the Lester's out here. Grant. Grant as well. Where is, where's Miguel? Always Miguel. One of the long time, long time, uh, of members out here. By the way, the other channel, holy cow, is just blowing up. Blowing completely up, people. Let's see, am I missing anybody? I hope I'm not missing anybody. Scrolling back, scrolling back. Really quickly. Uh, all the lurkers and Russian bots, we do appreciate each, each and every one of you. But you know what? All this talk, it's making Bear hungry. She's gonna head back into the woods. So until next time, people. Grrr.